Good morning, Internet. It feels like a lot more than a week has passed since my last video. Once again, there has been a lot of changes in that time. I was only just starting to get myself all set up to work from home, and then everything changed again because the government announced that we were about to go into level four lockdown, which was basically the whole country shutting down and going into quarantine except for essential services. So instead of just me working from home, it's everyone working from home or not working at all. Another reason to be thankful we're in New Zealand that the government has actually set up all sorts of benefit packages to support people who won't be paid over this period. I'm lucky I'm still working so I still get paid. We are all supposed to be living in bubbles of just people in our own household. My bubble is just me and the cat for now anyway. Technically I could include Caleb and his girlfriend in my bubble but because I went into isolation because I'm in a high risk group and they've been out in the world more recently than me, I'm gonna wait at least two weeks before I merge our two bubbles. So for now we're just waving across the backyard and keeping our distance from each other. We've worked out that if they stand out in the driveway and I stand just inside my door, then we're two metres away from each other, so we can talk that way if we need to. And, of course, being a very techy family, we've got a lot of other means of communication, like a Discord server. In fact, with the number of Discord chats and Zoom meetings and Skype and Facebook chat and everything else, I feel like I'm being more social now than I would be normally. I'm definitely not feeling lonely in my isolation. <laughs> it is very weird though. It's so quiet outside. I live on quite a busy street, but cars go past like once every few minutes at the moment because the only people driving anywhere are workers in essential services or people who are going to the supermarket. That's pretty much the only time you're allowed to go anywhere. We're still allowed to go out for walks and runs and I've been trying to get out at least once a day. It's really cool, people are really friendly. When you see someone coming towards you when you're out walking or running, and like there's this division. One person will go out and walk right on the side of the road and the other person will walk right on the side of the footpath so that you can pass the two meters between you. And um, just about everyone like smiles and waves and it's, it'd be interesting to see if that lasts for the whole four weeks or whatever length this ends up being. It's, the really big excitement for me this week was I managed to beat the lockdown by literally minutes to get my washing machine. Because my old washing machine broke down a couple of weeks back and this was before there was any suggestion of a lockdown, so I ordered a new one and it had to come from Auckland. That didn't seem like a big problem because, you know, plenty of time. So the washing machine was due to arrive on Wednesday. And then the lockdown was announced, which was going to start on Wednesday night. And... Wednesday arrived and I was checking the tracking and there was no sign of it yet and then the tracking got updated it had arrived in Christchurch but it was getting well into the afternoon by now so I rang the courier company and said I see it's arrived in Christchurch any chance I can get it today and the woman I was talking to said it has arrived it's in our depot but all our drivers have just gone out on their last delivery of the day and it didn't arrive in time to get into today's deliveries and we're shutting down at 5pm for four weeks. So I had a minor panic <laughs> and the woman, she was really sympathetic and she was trying to find a solution for me and she said, well, I'm not supposed to let you come and pick it up from the depot yourself, but if you can, I'll let you do that. 
but I couldn't think of anyone with a big enough vehicle and Caleb's girlfriend has a car but it's a really tiny one so I'd kind of resign myself to the fact we're just going to be hand washing everything for the next four weeks. And Caleb's girlfriend was busy measuring the, the boot of her car to see if if we had enough bungee cords maybe we could like get it here and then the phone rang and I got a call back from the amazing Linda at Flyways and she said she had managed to find a driver who was willing to come back to the depot, pick it up and drop it off for me. It might be just after five, but he'd do it on his way home. It's the best moment ever. When, when the delivery guys actually turned up, I, I just about hugged them. If I wasn't in self-isolation, I think I would have. It was so cool to actually have a washing machine, not be stuck without it for four weeks. I reckon Linda deserves a medal for having managed to organise that at the absolute last minute. The other excitement this week was I got to go and get a flu injection because they've brought the inoculations forward so that minimise the risk of people getting flu as well as getting COVID-19 because reduce the pressure on the hospitals. So high risk people are able to get their injections now and I think everyone else will get them in May, I think they said, but I'm in the high risk group so I got to go and get one. And they had a special flu clinic at my doctor's and it was a really cool setup. <laughs> it was all done in the car park and it was slightly drizzly so it wasn't the most pleasant experience but super efficient. You were assigned a time to turn up to it and they were quite adamant that you turned up exactly at the time you were given, you didn't come early or late or anything. I got there and there was a few people standing waiting and everyone was really good and sort of spread out along the footpath. It was mostly elderly people, I think I was the youngest person there. So some nurses came out with clipboards and they stood at the entrance to the car park and called out names. All the nurses were of course in full-on protective gear, the gowns and masks and so on. As your name got called out, you went into the car park and you queued in the car park. And there were two other nurses standing at the far end of the car park and so everyone was queuing like there were lines marked on the car park for where you were to stand about two metres apart. As the nurse at the front called you forward, they'd get you to pull down your sleeve so that you could expose your arm, they'd stab you quickly, put a bandage on it and then tell you to go away again. So it was like as fast as they could possibly do it, I think. And then they told you to go and stand in a corner of the car park out the way of everyone else so that you could just wait for a few minutes to make sure you weren't going to have a bad reaction to the injection and then leave. Bit different to the normal visit to the doctors. <laughs> but. At least now I'm protected from flu, so that's one thing I don't need to worry about. Although, given that I'm in isolation, the chances of getting flu are pretty low at the moment. But if we ever do come out of isolation, then I'm protected for the winter at least. So that's where we are. One week into isolation for me. Four days for the rest of the country. Everything's changed so fast. It's a bit like after the earthquakes, everything changed and everything became normal and still weird. I still feel like I haven't quite got into a proper routine. I think because last week was so messy with you know, everyone at work was so disrupted and I was trying to get myself sorted out for working from home and then suddenly everyone was trying to get themselves sorted for working from home. and. We're not quite sure how this is going to work yet, but hopefully this coming week we'll be able to start getting into our routines and, and start adjusting to this new normal. So, kia kaha internet. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, partners. <laughs>